Okay, let's get started. Uh, so to let you guys know, there's going to be another sale, kind of like a post Black Friday sale, but it's still technically Black Friday. So between the 26th and the 30th, Porcha Studio will be 20% off on all stores. Hopefully, if we get a review back from the Mac store, and yes, the Mac version is up and running. Um, it has been ap applied to the Mac store, they are reviewing it. Uh, we did get denied because there was a small little dumbass issue, but they will be um, uh, hopefully accepting it this time around, um, since that was the only issue they found the first time we applied. And uh, once that is done, Portrait Studio will be up after um, this week, hopefully right after, hopefully during, so you guys can make it to sale prices. Most likely it won't be, usually the wait time is two weeks uh, for a review from the Apple store. So all you Apple users who have waited so patiently and who have bought the Mac PC version anyway, thank you so much for um, waiting. Thank you so much for supporting anyways. Those who purchased it for wine, to use it on wine, um, uh, we will probably have you buy it again um, because you were aware that it doesn't run on Mac and you bought it for wine anyway so that you can sort of open it up on a Mac. A PC ex uh, executable file. For those who purchased it with the question that I am purchasing it now for a future Mac uh, related uh, like Mac release download link and we accepted them as buying it for later and they asked me specifically that I'm buying it right now for a future Mac release and I accepted the purchase. Um, those will be given a free link for Mac. Um, those who have not attempted to communicate with us on the fact that they cannot run it on wine and they are buying it for the future will um, those who have not co like contacted us on the wine will not be given a download link for they will have to purchase the Mac version okay that's how we stay fair um, if they communicated with us saying can I buy it now for future download and I said yes and they actually got a re response from one of us and they actually emailed us they will be given the only free link uh, for a Mac release okay um, it's been posted everywhere that it's not available for Mac, and those who bought it mistakenly, well, just close to show you, Apple users. <laughs> yes, 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 I accept. And then you get the human centipede. Anyway, um, let's get started. <laughs> uh, today's lesson is going to be about managing your contrast. Uh, that's something that I wanted to come back with. I did not want to come back with the uh, challenge submissions. I will do those as soon as possible, as soon as I feel ready for this kind of lengthy uh, class. Usually the challenge um, review classes for designs, and these look wonderful, they look phenomenal. Um, all these finished pieces sent in from my review specifically, I'm honored, thank you so much. These are amazing. Um, I will look at these when I'm at my best. I just don't feel like right now I'm at my best. So I want to give you guys, I mean, this is all an illustration. Each one is an illustration in and of itself, and I have to review it and somehow find a way to educate through it, even though they're all really well done. Um, so I want to be at my best, so that's why today will not be about the challenge. It'll uh, just be about a very simple study topic, which is managing contrast, which is not really simple at all. Uh, but before that, if you want to join me on Patreon this January, I'm going to be releasing the long-awaited private tutoring hours through Patreon. So there will be apprentices and then there will be the private students. Um, this will be a $50 tier because what I take for um, private tutoring on the side for one-on-one -on -one is $70 uh, an hour. So $50 an hour and you'll share the class with two or three other students. And it will be exactly like I do with private tutoring, except it will be one session a month. It'll be probably a two-hour session each time, and everyone will be handed out homework. Everyone will be um, evaluated on their own individual issues, will be diagnosed. And um, all homework is customized. Uh, you, you will get your set time to ask questions in class. It will be a one-on-one -on -one screen sharing uh, Google Hangout. Um, if that doesn't work, we'll find another way to share screens as soon as Google Hangouts is shut down. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be upcoming for January. I usually launch this kind of stuff at the beginning of the year. I will post announcements for it. Don't worry if you're interested. There will only be a possibly 10, seat, uh, 10 seats for this tier. Um, if I do it, if I decide to stick to it, it might not be possible because at the beginning of the year, private students really want my time. 
and I might not even have time to dedicate to a tier like this. So I will only apply, allow this tier to be available when I have time per semester. So usually semesters are two month periods. January to February are booked ahead of time. March, April are booked ahead of time. Um, so uh, March, April, May, yeah, and May, June, and then I just keep doing it like that. So those are semesters, and if the semester between January and February is not gonna be that crazy booked, it doesn't look like it, um, then I will allow that tier to open up on Patreon and you will get even more of an exclusive one-on-one -on -one experience in class without many, many students or 100 students or something like that, or the 50 or so students that are in apprenticeship right now. Yes, so let's get started on today's session. Okie dokie. Managing your contrast. Let's see what the size of this is. All right, so any questions before we get started? Honestly, if anyone starts talking about memes and, and, and what you young kids are doing, y'all getting shut down. Y'all getting um, be quieted on this channel. No distractions during live stream, please. Thank you. Okay. So managing your contrast is really difficult because you guys just start in the middle of nowhere and then just branch out with your values. Um, that's not a good way to paint because you don't know what good values are yet. You're still a beginner or something similar to a beginner where you have just a general understanding of what dark looks like, like and what light looks like. And especially because you guys usually overdo with colors. You guys usually just jump in with your colors and then you still have no idea what values are sitting under those colors and what they can do. So in order to deter that kind of miscommunication between what you think is a good gray value and what your drawing needs, once you've applied a bunch of stuff and it's created a necessity for a correction and you don't know how to go about that correction, that's what I mean when I say what your drawing needs, you, the first thing to do to deter that kind of situation um, is to choose a good background value. The background value is part of the light environment, which means a communication between your light source, your background, and your object. And your object here is so washed out, so low contrast, there's really no quick fix to fix it. As soon as we touch this stuff, things either get ridiculously bright while everything else is still barely climbing. Um, really, really messy work. You're using single pixel width brush strokes for the hair. Really, really low texture awareness, texture understanding. And then you've got this misrepresented rotation on the three quarter view eye and you're just hoping against hope that whatever you put to down is going to look great. You are also saying that this was a character, a D&D character or something like that that you were painting for a friend. You are in no position to be working with uh, narratives. You should be studying. You shouldn't be offering to draw someone's character yet. I know that's fun. I know it's great to be called the artist of the group. I know it's great to be the glory is really what I'm talking about. Um, it's the, the, <clears throat> um, it's the, uh, the, the, sorry, I'm just getting distracted. Can you guys please focus on the lesson? Thank you. Is it just me or does the dude have a blue mustache? Um, yeah, anyway, uh, what was I saying? The, the, the glory factor is what makes you guys decide on working from a narrative. I will always say this. I'll take any opportunity to say it. Try to rush your studies, do more studies. The, I, the rule of thumb is apply, more, apply yourself to studies more than narratives and blueprinting and making stories and doing whatever it is that is fun to do with art. You're in no position to have fun yet. Um, you don't even know the, the basics, the basic levers and switches for you to have fun with them. So light environment being neglected is a major thing that you learn from form studies, so you don't have much form study knowledge right now. Your light source doesn't seem to be coming from any direct area, but you are kind of talking about a light source coming from the top, right? Let's correct the light environment first. All right, so it's cool seeing your character come to life, but is this really what you think your character looks like? Is this really the best way to represent your character? Do you think this is the best skill you are in right now to draw that character with? I, I don't mind if I don't have the skill yet to draw the, the images that I see in my mind. I don't mind because I know I'm just going to one day try them and then not be able to pull them off the way I want to. And maybe one day I'll try them and be, it be exactly what I want. A lot of my recent illustrations, and I've recently been trying um, illustrations in color and just been messing around with that, I would never have been able to pull them off the way I pulled them off this time around a year ago. And that's why I didn't do colors for so long. That's why I did studies for so long. 
for me, the face carries the character and I wanted to perfect that. And I look back to my studies in January, which I thought were wonderful. I look back to them now and they're ridiculous. They're full of mistakes. So it's always better as a rule of thumb to encourage study hours and not um, encourage this hyper, hyper need for instant gratification with your character designs. Okay, so remove the hair, remove the white hair and the sparkly white eyes and the Jack Frost character style. And just, for the love of God, do a study. A simple study of some brown eyes, brown hair, whatever, something basic. Just to teach you what it means to lighten the background and why it needs to be lightened. It needs to be lightened because in this case, you chose hair that is bright and hair that is white. It just looks like a really, really low contrast person that is kind of just floating there, but also has... They're not a ghost because they're reflecting some lighter or they might be bioluminescent and they're kind of just glowing from the inside out with some magical component, but then why isn't the rest of the face glowing? Is it just that strand of hair that's glowing? It made no sense. There was no continu continuity. Now that we've addressed that, we can understand where the light is coming from and probably make this even brighter. We have to talk about the skin tone because that's going to be the largest part that we are... Re re reacting to the light source with. So a light environment is the light source, the background, and the object. And the object, in this case, the larger part of the object is the skin tone. So what you have here is this, this really, really washed out skin tone. Some age signatures. You have this, you know, the albino character that you're trying to draw that you described, but that doesn't mean you get to make their, you know, their, their whole face kind of just float in one really, really analogous uh, value range. It's just way too washed out. So what I'm trying to do here is create a separation between darker co uh, core shadows, areas of core shadow, and areas of highlight. So if the light is coming from that side and the shadows are pretty soft, that means the light isn't really from the far side behind or beside the head, but in front of the head from an angle. So the head is still getting direct light. Okay, I'm keeping the eye socket dark because it's recessed. And this is just some very delicate work because it's already such a polished piece. And I'm bringing in some edges as well. Good job on that nostril. The nostril seems great. That's about the only um, f like um, uh, edge work sound thing you have in here. Everything else is too washed out to reveal an edge. The black of the nostril is really what revealed the edge. So this painting is very hungry for contrast. You have this bounce light on the eyes and what's happening there. It's just things are way too washed out for you to be even considering bounce light. What you did with the eyes is that, you know, the eyes get, eye whites get this dark if someone's been crying for seven days or if they're bloodshot or they got punched. You need to start addressing the major value differences between different materials on the face. So water and anything that actually comes in high pigment, like high whites. So the shine of the nose or the white of the eyes. And black and high pigment there, which is um, lash line and whatever. But in this case, you threw yourself a hardball. Not only do you have enough studies behind you, um, not do you not have enough studies, but you, th but you painted a character that has no dark spots in them. This is a bit of an advanced kind of study uh, topic for you, how to pull off a read with characters that have no lash line. I imagine you didn't really pick up many references or you, used, you stayed reference free because a reference would have shown you that, yes, things do get just a little bit dark around the eyes and the lash line, unless they're really, really high, um, you know, albino. And I didn't make the lashes any lighter than you, than you uh, designated here. Now we have some kind of contrast in there. The eyes are coming through. It doesn't look demonic. And the reason why it looks demonic, I'm not trying to be funny. Um, whenever you mess with the white of the eyes, whenever you hide them or distort them or make them darker, you are adding that unfamiliar, almost scary read to the character. And that's what makes it read as demonic. Anything that is uncanny or freaky or, or just inhuman is what we consider demonic. Not even like creature. It didn't even go. It went back past creature and into demonic whenever you mess with the white of the eyes. Creatures tend to not have this purely, you know, whenever the iris is visible, if it's purely black, it has that 
little touch of scariness to it. The way they use the owl in the fourth kind movie. Some creatures do have that weird pupil value of the iris color. All right. Um, just raising values up and keeping certain values down. Things that are staying down are the things that are recessed or dark or come dark. Things that are going up are things that are exposed to the light source that are typically light spots. Any anywhere where you have an elevation or altitude on the face. It's really basic. It's not guesswork. It's the same stuff you learn if you painted and perfected a front view face. But again, it wasn't just a front view, it was a three quarter view. Three quarter view albino, three quarter view albino in a dark scene with white hair and magic, and you were just not setting yourself up for success here. Then there's your rotation problems. Rotation is a massive chapter. I was telling my other student as well, rotation is a very big tester. It's a way to diagnose students standing in the way they, what they need left to study in their form studies. And um, there's like a whole chapter on it in my book. There's just the longest chapter in my book because there's just, you can't talk enough about rotation. It's the most difficult study. It is a thing that your brain does not like to do. It was wired in another way to be very symbol dependent. So what you did here is you forced the visibility of the other nostril. Now it might be visible, but look at how wide you, look, it's a very swollen septum here. So if she's a feminine character, the nostril really shouldn't be that thick. And now I'm creating this really unforgiving edge between the nose and the rest of the cheek behind. And then I'll kind of introduce this, the nostril value there. Flip the canvas. That looks like a good spot. And then I'll bring in the nostril wing. Okay. So as you can see, none of this was possible without first creating a reference point, and that was the background value. That's how I'm going to decide later on, not now, how bright I go with some of the highlights. And if she's pale, if she looks very tan right now, she needs to go much lighter. Okay, for the way you made the lips, there isn't much uh, revealing the cylindrical volume of the lips from three-quarter view. So as a diagnostic for this specific student, do some form studies. Stop doing, you know, stop trying to employ your undeveloped skill for you know, anything publishable, anything that is remotely fun. It's just, we have to have a little bit of, of study time dedicated. You can't have fun all the time. And though it might have been a good way to reveal your issues and get diagnosed, you could have done that easily with a study and you could have also gotten, gotten, gotten diagnosed. Doing masterpieces or attempting those is not the only way to get a good di diagnosis. Okay. So just trying to sculpt out more edges. All right, the hair, please never ever do hair like that again. This is why in the 14 day challenge format, all the characters that my students draw, all the portraits, sorry, that my students draw are hairless baldies. Keep them like that, make them bald. We're not doing texture study yet and texture studies are hair. You have to perfect all the sciences and the the juggle between anatomy and form that is drawing a portrait. God damn it, I hate this steel series mouse pad, it's so massive. <clears throat> okay, then there's the edge here of the face. And there's the light spots here. Adding contrast to a washed out painting is like starting the painting from scratch. I'm actually redoing every component here. So you weren't really painting, you were staying so safe that, you know, it, it, it was a, an incomplete light environment. It was an inhuman creature in a non-existent form world. If things were that dark and that invisible, it would be a nighttime scene and your character would not be visible. But they were still visible in your world, and that is a mistake. And we've been through this, we've been through the value of staying away from uh, masterpieces. It's not good for you. None of this is uh, fun, you know, it's just to tell students that they don't know anything. It's not fun. 
not about telling students you can't have fun and you are not allowed to have fun, but in a, an attempt to rewire the way your brain stores memories and teach your brain to start storing three-dimensional pictures instead of flat symbols that, it's, that it used to teach you language is a very difficult task. I'm not going to sugarcoat how difficult it might be, so having fun might be better left for later. So even if her hair is white, we still need that pocketed... Hair isn't see-through. It can be white, but it's not see-through. It can have a little bit of translucency to it. So it can still get in the way of the light, creating a nice little edge pocket here that we can use to define an edge of a face. Okay. And now we start off with the more white objects in the face. So now I'm bringing in even more contrast. This was just preliminary contrast application. It's still nowhere near what is needed for a, for a pale character. So we start off there as the white of the eye. And then the pupil should stay black. So now I'm introducing real contrast. Okay, I'll leave the white of the lashes alone. I won't touch them. They'll stay that gray, but they will not be any lighter. And then if the character has white eyes, they're going to be very, very reflective. So you see, it's really basic paint-by-numbers application of value. You're blocking in. Based on what you're calculating as visible, what the light environment outside here is revealing. And then you're going to have the pure white reflection and that's just going to be adjusted as I zoom out. I might need to do that zoomed out. I'm going to use a soft brush. <clears throat> Not looking at comments right now. If you want to ask, I'll let you guys know when I can take questions. So this is that pure white that water does. Water reflects the pure white of anything nearby. And since the, the white of the eye is so bright, it's going to um, reflect a bit more white, get even lighter. And usually on the eyes, there's this inner little anchor here. Well, first of all, there's the tear duct area, which gets a bit bright because the water is there as well. And then you've got that bright patch right there right on the inside. Again, just blocking in. She's very pale, so let's start bringing that in. Brightening the background a little bit. Okay. Now if I darken the character, her skin might darken, but she, it'll, it'll it'll start creating a really nice balance between black and white and mid-tones. And, and when it comes to contrast, how, many, how much mid-tone do I have? That's not what defines contra contrast. You just answered your question. When someone asks, how do I control my contrast with my midtones? What do you mean? You just called them midtones. They're supposed to stay midtones. What is midtone? It's not up in the air for what is white and what is black and what is in between. These are all midtones. Midtones should stay exactly as what they're described between generally in the middle between black and white, where this actually could be black right here. It's dark enough. We don't always use this end, and this could be white. Things right here are midtones. Contrast is determined in how black you went or how white you went in areas that are really reflective or areas that are really high pigment. So really black eyebrows should be used, should be using this value. Really white spectral light reflection should be using this value up here. That's what decides contrast. But in your version, you really didn't even have the pure black of the pupils. Um, you didn't have the pure black of anything and you didn't even allow yourself to use white eyebrows, I mean black eyebrows. You were using this um, you know, character design that didn't give you any chances to develop your contrast. So now I'm going in to other dark spots. Really good job on that nostril. So I've been hearing about um, people talking on 4chan about me and how some people uh, call my students like masochists. 
How could they volunteer themselves to be talked down to like that? They must all be masochists, and Isarak must be like this dominatrix. And then some say that I'm like this Trump supporter, and I'm just laughing my ass off hearing about all this stuff reported to me. And God, uh, it's all from 4chan or something like that. I think some of it is from Reddit. All I hear is just incels, just mouth breathing my name. Please don't talk about me, incels. I don't even know who the hell you are. And obviously, if, if you've just visited one of my sessions, you know I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not political in any way, honestly. I'm not supporting anybody. They're all liars and freaks and pedophiles. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, all of those comments are wrong. And as for the masochism thing, um, uh, if masochism is education, then yeah, I think we're all just a little bit masochistic. It takes a lot of self-discipline to, uh, to sit down and study something and rewire your brain to think differently. All right, so I'm changing this value, sharing here on the side of the nose. It is the side that is facing away from the light, so that's okay. It can be a little darker, but over here. I just want one of those people to come to my class and just sit down, submit their work, and just be proven wrong. But no, they just sit in their little little incel, incel um, castles filled with cat litter and smell of piss, and they just don't come out of their little troll holes to educate themselves and better their existence or existence of others. Something's, nothing's worse than an uneducated person pretending to be educated. Um, nothing's worse than someone who thinks they're smarter than they really are and their identity is linked to this false illusion of their intelligence. It's nothing is worse than someone deliberately ignorant who is aware that they don't really know that much but they still try to perpetuate like this image of their of their intellect it's it's something really humbling in being able to admit where what you don't know how to do or what you don't know how to do i'm bringing in just a little bit of that white black indication here for the lash line but um you can go ahead and do exactly this and you'll just get that kind of really really washed out really bright eyelash look but still a fold is a fold so a fold might still need some black fold down here might still need some black and as for the waterline you guys do the waterline all wrong all the time just make it a slight indication on the farthest sticky outy part of the eyeball that center line of the eyeball that's the only part of the waterline that catches light honestly there's no other part that catches light you're also missing a lot of um uh, cast shadows except for the nose so because the nose is going to be off I'm just going to soften it towards this side and keep this side sharp since the nose shadow is moving in this direction and I'm also softening this edge that I introduced but still it's still there I mean squint your eyes you can still see the distinction now I'm going to address areas that are shiny oil water anything like that You know what I dare? I dare an entire group of 4chan users uh, to come in to my channel and just completely like bombard my channel. I dare them to just sit there. Most likely they will all be quieted um, and just actually start attending. Usually most of these people are creatives. Um, they're really just, they have a lot of pent up creativity. And someone who has pent up creativity who isn't expressing it can get really aggressive because they trying, they're trying to manifest some part of their identity in creating something and looking at it and being proud. And when you have nothing to be proud of, your, your entire existence kind of just comes to a standstill and you haven't created anything to feel useless. And so these people have all this pent up need to identify themselves in their art. And some of them do draw, some of them write poems. Um, and then you have this pompous ass like me coming in and telling them what they're drawing is wrong. But again, there are those who take it seriously and not as a hobby or as a hobby, but still seriously and want to get better and actually start listening. And there are those who take it as an, a defiance against their identity, right? So I get it. I'm in the field of work where I'm challenging people and telling them their entire identity and everything they've worked on has been not enough. 
and that induces their rage that's already there because they are aware they are not enough as is before I even entered the picture. So I kind of just sympathize and feel sorry and kind of have like a maternal need to kind of be patient with them. But, uh, and I'm not offended in the way that, oh, no, how dare you call me a Trump supporter? Like, I've been called worse shit, like a terrorist and stuff like that. But I'm, it's just really funny that there's these group of little, like, shut-ins who just talk so much shit about someone they've never met or have never even attended, you know, where I, put, like, where I frequent or it's just kind of like a, a topic of discussion, like I'm a non-human topic of discussion and they just like to talk about, you know, anything that comes to mind. But, um, yeah, I'd like to see a couple of them here post, post their art, get better, regret what they say, move on in life. So I'm using my smudge brush to get rid of these ridiculous little lines. I mean, did it work? Did it work? Using individual brush strokes to pull off the hair, did it work? I mean, I, I know your thinking pattern went like something like this. Hair is many strands. <laughs> if I draw many strands equals hair no that's not how it works because as a human eye it does not see every single little hair so it would work if we saw every single little hair but that's that doesn't make any sense if the person had three hairs on their head then it would make sense to draw three little lines um but hair clumps together with oils and creates groups and groups should be represented with a larger brush stroke so you see what i'm doing here i'm using a large brush stroke to create the pattern of a hairline i'm not trying to draw every single little brush stroke, though I understand your <laughs> your train of logic or train of thought or how you've listed that in your mind. A little bit of scalp is visible in the parting. All right, as for it being white, the defi defining factor of white hair is that it just doesn't have uh, any any pure blacks in it and it's really, really reflective. Man, this has been a funny vacation. There's also someone who tried to torrent my Patreon content and threatened to, you know, unleash hell if I didn't give them Patreon content because they did really pay, but Patreon receipt tells me that they were fraudulent source or from Russia or something like that. And then there was a couple of injuries at the gym. And then it's been a funny vacation, but I'm happy I'm back. Things make sense again. I had a little bit too much to deal with all at once, I think, and I just needed some time to myself. <clears throat> as you can see, I'm shrinking my brush as I add more detail. That's all you need because the main focus of a portrait is in the eyes. So the eyes should not be contested. And the secret, we can use dodge tool right now because there's no color. Be careful with using dodge tool, dodge tool on color. Um, but we can use dodge tool here, not have to chase it with sponge. Um, just as a little bow of highlight, just wherever the light touches. And sometimes in white hair, remember how it's translucent? You can get subsurface scattering. And my voice always softens when it's time to talk about subsurface scattering. That's so pretty. A little bit of rim light on wherever that light hits, not too much. Okay, and we still have to push that paleness, so I'm being very, very careful here. She still looks a little bit light, and so now I'm starting to move into the midtones and draw the midtones up a little brighter. But even pale skin is technically gray when you grayscale it, unless it's been excessively like over exposed in a photo or lots of makeup or white background, super, super bright light environment, not allowing any shadows to pool. I'm going to use dodge tool around the white of the eyes. Not too much. Dodge tool is crazy. <coughs> mm -hmm. And you don't, you're not desaturating all of it down. Obviously you use dodge tool for a reason because it has a nice effect on the color, kind of can really make subsurface scattering happen automatically. Dodge tool, if any tool can automatically give you subsurface, it's dodge tool because it saturates and illuminates and that's exactly what happens in subsurface. Um, but still it can be a little bit too much on an untrained hand. So 
So she's looking more and more pale. You see how I don't even touch the lips? They don't need to be that rendered. And I'm just going in all these areas here and bringing in that paleness. It's okay if it looks splotchy. We always follow up with a skin polish with a smudge brush on scatter. So any questions at all, just at Estabrac so that I can read them. I'm taking questions now. Any bright splotches here? The reason why this is such a slow process is because it was already a pre-existing painting and I didn't use any filters. I probably should have to rush the process. If this was my own painting that had terrible contrast, I probably would use a quick filter. Um, but it's not educational and it's not for your benefit when I do. You should be able to have a good contrast starting out with your initial brush strokes. Are the shapes in her iris all right? No, 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 they're not. They're really, really wonky and not centered, but it's not a three-quarter view day, so I can't really talk about that right now. But I do have classes all about that. Today is just about contrast, so the lesson will get sidetracked. Right, I'm just creating little clumps of whatever I can find and then smudging away at the negative space depending on where the light source is coming from, really. She's got white hair. Kind of just melts in with the value of the skin towards the start of the root. All right, and see how the eyebrows can still read as white, but they're technically gray. Right? You don't actually get white. If they're pretty white, like if they're actually white, you do have to get like this value here and paint them in. Also white eyebrows that are really pale and not abundant, it just looks like she has no eyebrows. This person from a distance would not have the framing quality of a darker eyebrow. Her eyebrows would just look like that. So technically speaking, realistically speaking, this would be her eyebrow shape and color. So be careful with characters like that because and not that it's funny at all, and not that, you know, we just have to identify exactly what it is that we're painting. Too often is it that a student tries something really cool, like a Castlevania style with bright white eyebrows and white lashes, and they end up with a someone who looks like they're on chem, uh, chemotherapy. It's not funny. I'm not using it as a joke. It's just exactly what you're drawing. It's the realistic equivalent of it. Someone doesn't have eyebrows. That's kind of what it looks like. Pale and uh, almost sickly. And we talked a lot about this in the villain challenge when we're drawing anything that looks sickly or near to death. You know, God help them in their struggles, but we tend to associate death with a villain because that's what, just what they love, that's what they do. And the way they desi designed that wizard in the Wizard of Earthsea for Studio Ghibli, the remake of it, or the whatever the hell the hell that was, um, the way they designed the wizard that was uh, helping people cross over or was messing that, that um, uh, what's it called? Uh, crap, what's the wizard called that messes with life and death? What's it called? A, uh, I can't believe I forgot. But that wizard was designed with no eyebrows, I think. Very sickly looking guy. He looked like he was dead. And he was messing with necromancer. Um, he looked like he was messing with death. A little bit of extra definition here trying to correct this and then if she has really bright eyes I mean these are bright but if she has those really bright eyes you can go ahead and bring in some extra illumination necromancer yeah yeah necromancer I got it thank you and then if you want to push it even further you want that ghostly look to her you still have a lot of contrast but you can get rid of the rim of the pupil right there and then finally I would um, start bringing in any highlighters, any skin brightness, any reflective brightness. That's the only thing that's carrying our contrast. Now we're missing eyebrows too. All right, and this is just going to raise that extra level in the paleness once again. Again, the light is coming from that side, so should probably cast that shadow already. Okay, so a 
little bit of, I'm just tempted to add some brightness to the lips, but you've over textured the lips so they look very dry, like they're thirsty. But they do need some brightness. You need that rim of light around the lip. You need more brightness around the body and the skin tone there. This is just me adjusting the value. This is not how you should do it. Very, very washed out scene. Very pale character. You didn't really have much going for an opportunity to bring in any contrast. But at least now you have some edges that are carrying some kind of read. I, I use the filter towards the end. And all the values carried well, that's why the filter worked. There was no screaming splotch of white or black anywhere. And now I'm just brightening and, I'm sorry, a blending and smoothing, smoothing out the skin. Blending any edges that don't need to stay that sharp because they've served their purpose. Keeping that part of the nose sharp. And this could have easily been a, like learned in a safe form study environment, 14 day challenge environment. You didn't have to make all these mistakes on a beloved character that your friend wrote or you wrote. But again, if it had to be done, then it had to be done. So from a distance, I'm starting to apply some detail. Shines on the side of the nose. On the eyelids, radial shading as the face pockets into the hair. Definitely looking a little pale. To make her look paler, you might want to uh, lighten the lips. A darker lip means a, a darker skin tone. Also, when I think pale, I associate it with like Russian features or Asian features. I've never really seen such Arabian looking features and a very Indian looking mouth, all full and pretty, um, uh, like Ashwarya Ray or something like that with such pale skin. It just doesn't feel like it combines well. But I've seen Russian girls who have perfectly, um, you know, full lips, so. But more Russian faces than, I tend, I try to look, find these trends in faces. These, even as I'm grocery shopping, I try to see and the recording faces as I go, but I see more thinner lips and more European faces than thicker lips. Okay, so a little bit more towards the pale, or it's not so much pale as, as much as her all her values are level. That's why she's reading as pale. Okay, I'm rich down. I'm blending that out because now it's an organic shape. And um, contrast is there. I don't like what happened to the body. As for the hair, um, if it's supposed to be silvery and kind of caught in the wind, she looks like she has a Rachel from the 1990s haircut right now. It seems very 90s in the excessive volume and hairspray. Um, to have something that looks a little bit more natural, you really do need to go a little bit less trendy, a little bit more wild, something weird, something we're not used to if she's such an unearthly creature. Um, I would say something more, you know, not a perfect parting, something more of a middle parting, or all her hair is slicked back, or caught in the wind, or something like that if she's like a half dragon character, as you wrote. Not this nice Christmas dinner haircut. It's not, it's too pretty, it's too, it's too nice. It's bring your boyfriend home to show mom and dad kind of haircut, okay? It's a little bit too uh, perfect. That volume here in the little haircut area, I recommend something else, maybe a braid to get out of her way. Maybe she's bald, maybe she's got thin, short hair. Um, but this haircut is really not much thought is put into it. And that's again, another way of saying, you're not really writing, you're just drawing. And for you to really write, you'd even think about the haircut, technically speaking, if she was this, angelic creature that can transform into fantasy dra character creatures or something like that or some biblical creature she would have a bit more of a you know a wild wildness to her maybe no smile maybe she's a bit more grim there, 
I'm just again going back to all those areas and I'm going up in my value and my contrast because the background is so bright. That's what's guiding me to create a really nice controlled contrast rise. But again, it goes back to your choice of character. There's only so much we can do in the black side of the contrast. So we're trying to pull off everything on the white side of the contrast. Um, the, the body anatomy is just all wrong. I think that, yes, the shoulder is missing. The armpits are asymmetrical. There's just too much wrong with it. This is what you would be studying if it was a form study. This is what you would be doing. I would, if she was caught in the light, I would put it, bring in some subsurface scattering here on the side. Um, I would try to use even more black around the face because, again, we only have so much black to work with. There's no eyebrow because let me show you something. I'm going to draw a set of eyebrows on her and all the contrast will fall right into place. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the black here. Even girls that are really blonde, like have you seen those platinum blonde girls? They, they also have a, a degree of black, you know, blackness or pigment to their eyebrows. So the face will be so much more readable. The background is too bright right now. Kind of served its purpose. So the contrast is really sitting nicely when we bring it in for the eyebrows. The face just kind of comes together. And uh, I'm going to just um, branch that down. Okay, and then obviously I'd bring in lash line as well, a lash line, and it would be pretty much almost complete apart from some screaming rotation issues and. Uh, some texture issues in the skin and the fact that we push the paleness so high. So this is typically what I would do. The rotation is a little bit off because you have the inner part of this eyelid not visible, but in the three-quarter view eye, it is this part that is visible and the far part not visible that hides because the eye rotated in three-quarter view. Okay, so I left it like that. Um, you can invert it, you can bring down some of the brightness in the background, but you're still, you know, you're still playing it with dangerous, you're still in dangerous territory if you darken the background too much, but you can level it out. And if she does have that magical component, you can bring it out with a little bit of that. See how she's kind of glowing? I would darken this, and if you need to make her glowing from the inside out, she's transforming or something, ignore this band, ignore that. This is kind of what you would need to do. And at this point, whenever you use brightness like that, you are doing a light source. So you're treating your character like a light source. They're glowing from the inside out. That means anywhere we would have a shadow, even the nostrils brighten up. Okay, so let's take a look at the before. All right, it was a really low spot I was climbing from after. And... I'm just so tempted to do this, but the character writing, the way you wrote the character, it just needs brightness, but I am so tempted to just do that and brighten the background a bit, but just to show you, so tempted to do that, just get more of a natural skin tone, not everything has to be about magic, just learn how to draw a character, but um, very, very low, low spot I was climbing from <laughs> all the way up to where we are now. I was just working with the features you have. I might have brought in my own features, but just look at one spot and you'll see that I kind of pretty much stayed true to it while adding the necessary volume I needed. All right, so it's step one of controlling your contrast. Please choose a good background value. And step two would be this is just too much brightness for me right now. Step two would be, um, now, now she looks um, African skin tone. Step two would be choose the skin tone uh, value that you're going to be working from for the pale character. Pale people, let's look at um, what we have here, here pale skin. <clears throat> They're still technically gray 
they still have gray skin. This is a pale skin tone, and let's take it into Photoshop and grayscale it with color layer, with nothing else but color layer. And uh, you'll still see that it's gray, it's grays, mid-tone grays. The whites tend to be a bit white. The nose is one of the shiniest spots in the head. Typically the eyes shouldn't be brighter than even really, really sparkly eyes like her pure blue um, still read as a dark value. Okay, you have that little shine on the lip I told you about. The shine on the nose leading up into the forehead. Nothing's really as bright as the forehead. And the nose. Take a look at these averages. Take a look at these averages. And these around the eyes. The eyes are pretty dark, darker than the cheekbone. But the white of the eye shoots all the way up. Okay, and then the chin, much darker as an average than the cheekbones, which are much darker as an average than the forehead. All right, I'm just clicking the eyedropper and looking at the ups and downs of this little tool. Okay, any questions? Should you use your lighten over highlight or are they not interchangeable? Um, no, they're not. Lighten lightens values as light. Lighten lightens values darker than the color you've chosen. Highlight messes around with con with like a dodge tool qualities in the way they programmed it. Lighten is not interchangeable with highlight uh, mode. <clears throat> is that what you're saying? Like one of these, like dodge. Um. Any any more questions? <clears throat> Does she look masculine because her chin uh, looks like it's in front of the chin? Eh, I've seen characters look like this. When we darkened her, she kind of looked like Leona Lewis. That's, that, that's her name, right? That girl. Um, uh, anyone who has issues with the truth have issues with ego. We are here to be talked down to. We're here to grow um, and be open. And this rock is one of the few willing to not pander to ego. We aren't here to be talked down to yet. Um, thank you, Titan. Um, um, good, good. If being in the community teaches you to uh, to take critique a little bit better, then yeah, that's good. Um, contrast is determined in how black and how white you went. Yeah, it's not really in the mid-tones. Those pretty much stay gray, as you can see. And this has all the contrast we need, but look at how little black we have. Look at that. It's just around the irises and the pupils. It's just a little bit around the nostril, but it's a downturn nostril. It's not upturn. And a lot of black just on the, look at that, how black down we went, how down into black we went in the, in the line of the mouth. Um, the black of the hair, very, very dark. And, and that's it. Like, that's all you really need for a light environment like this. And if it's a studio light and the lights are shining everywhere and it's massive and it's, you know, then you're going to get even more of a spike in your in your brights um, and even less of a chance to have black. So if it wasn't as strong a light environment from studio lights, her nostrils might be a little bit more black. Uh, but maybe the, the red in her cheeks wouldn't show or the fuzz in her cheeks, the little bit of highlight um, coming out, that peach fuzz that we have on our skin. The black in the eyebrow, she doesn't really have thick eyebrows, so we wouldn't be able to measure it like that. But contrast is in how black and how white you went and always like I always say use black and white um, like you had like you paid a million dollars for an ounce of black paint and white paint you would use that or not even use it at all maybe not a million dollars maybe four hundred dollars <laughs> for an ounce of black and white paint and you, you really had to use it sparingly um, oh yes it's the rock hurt my feelings make me feel like trash <laughs> Oh God. Um, uh, yeah. Any more questions? Um, when can someone use pure blacks and pure whites? When you need it for black or white, black pigment or white reflection shouldn't be all across the face like you would in a film noir type setting, um, which is like a you know, a dark scene. Oops, I put an E at the end. Images. Now this is a 
dark scene. There's no light other than what's behind them. Everything is black. There's no light in the scene. And they're using any any kind of resource nearby to create reflections to reveal the characters. Right. And you have lots of blacks, lots of shadows, sharp moving down. And you have a lot of black because the pigment, like I said, is what's providing the black. The hair is a pigment. But her skin tone is, is, is bright. She's pale. So we're not using any black on her skin. But if she has black lipstick on, we have no choice but to use it. Use it intel intelligently. Use it <laughs> logically is what I'm trying to, trying to say. Okay. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you everyone for attending. Please don't forget about the Portrait Studio sale next week starting Monday. It'll be only five days of 20% off on all stores. Um, and then a, a Mac release is imminent. Um, look out for that. I will make a video announcing the sale Sunday night and I will make a video announcing the Mac release when we get a, uh, an okay to put it up on the store. Um, thank you everyone for joining and thank you guys for the wait. I'm sorry it took me so long to finally go live. Um, I will see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye everyone.